<clears throat> okay, maybe I work it out. I don't know. Welcome. Uh, today I'm gonna walk you through doing some docking that is a little bit unusual and complicated. Um, but it's unusual and complicated because we're gonna be doing something very special. There is this uh, comment on Facebook that pretty much is trying to run a dual ligand docking. First, an inhibitor, I think it's an inhibitor, and then the substrate for the enzyme. And the problem roughly is that they are overlapping. So what does that mean? In context, I guess that they are trying to first find the binding site for one ligand and in a way evaluate what happens with the second ligand, if it binds to an alternative site or not. And under that assumption, that means both ligands should not overlap, they should be in two distinct sites. Now, the example for the uh, protein that they are using for this docking is this one, the angiotensin converting enzyme. As you can see, it's a, an enzyme that has been tested and it's important, of course, it has been crystallized in the context of human drosophila versions, even in the presence of a molecule called lysinopropyl. This molecule, from what I gather, I'm no expert on this other than docking, is this molecule. If you can see, it looks kind of like a peptide, uh, carboxylic ends, nitrogens, and something like side chains. This is not exactly uh, um, a peptide in that it has been modified a bit. It's close enough. And the real substrate for this enzyme, or at least one of the substrates, is a peptide derived from this protein, the angio angiotensinogen. As you know, uh, the gen part of the protein, uh, or the name, implies that it's processed to be uh, separated in fragments. And we can see in the uh, post translational modification on processing that there are several peptides. One of them, angiotensin 1, is what is the target of uh, this angiotensin converse tank enzyme. Uh, as you can see, this is the code for the angiotensinogen, the protein that it's converted into, uh, that is bound by this enzyme. Uh, and we can see here on this entry that at least for the human and genotensin converting enzyme, uh, this is the catalytic process. Angiotensin 1 with water is hydrolyzed into angiotensin 2 and l histidyl l leucine, a peptide. So you can start seeing how a peptide like substance will be a competitive inhibitor or maybe another type with a peptide. Okay, so we have pretty much everything we need to work. Uh, we have a receptor, we have knowledge of the ligands, if not the structures, and we're gonna use two tools. There's no way around this. We need to use two different tools. One is gonna be the most recent version of autotopin. Uh, that is because the user in that uh, question on Facebook is using Bina through Pyrex, I think. Oh, he, could, he, could be, or he or she could be using Autodoc, but I'm going to use Bina. And the reason is that even if the lysinopril is not a peptide, it has a lot of sp3 bonds, carbon to carbon, and those are a lot of degrees of freedom. So this is going to be a tough molecule to bind. Now, the other tool we're going to use, it's going to be the Autodoc Crankpep. This tool is a specific variation of Autodoc that is designed to dock peptides into protein targets. And because angiotensin 1 is a peptide, we're going to use this one to dock uh, the peptide onto the protein. I, I gotta, I, this experiment actually will have to be run both ways. What do I mean by that? First, receptor with the inhibitor and then the peptide as a third, uh, well, as a second uh, ligand in the docking, or with the receptor angiotensin 1 as a substrate and then the inhibitor. Both are valid. There is no way to, to draw a docking that resembles physiological conditions when you have two substrates or two molecules that could bind to the protein. You, I guess you will have to run both and get a consensus of the results and an interpretation that is valid. For this process, I'm thinking on running... I was actually thinking on running the peptide and the inhibitor. But here comes part of the use of the knowledge. 
As far as I can tell here, the human angiotensin has been crystallized with lysonopril. So I guess docking angiotensin with lysonopril using Bina, and then from that, the best complex we can select from these two, run it in autodoc crank, crank pep, to get the peptide into that structure. Okay, so we're gonna run with that. So first of all, after setting up the stage for all of this, what I'm thinking is that we need this molecule and we can probably get it in several ways. I'm gonna check UCSF Sync. That's a, a source that I like a lot, but I also am gonna check uh, Drogbank. which is not as reliable uh, for structures, but it's a very good source of information. Lysonopril and the same on UCF sync. If that fails, I'll draw the structure by hand. I guess I'm, yeah, like, I'm, for some reason, I'm getting confused with the name and I'm spelling it probably wrong. So here we go. Here we go. If we need it be, here we have a 3D version of the structure. Both databases are reputable. So instead of drawing them by myself, I'd rather take them from here, in particular to keep the stereochemistry correct. So I'm going to go for the reference from UCF Sync. Yeah, that should be it. I'm going to double check that it's correct. Mm -hmm. I'm going to open it on Avogadro, which is my favorite visualizer. And it looks all right. It's three dimensional for sure. And with the probably the correct protonation state. So I'm, I'm satisfied with this one. I'm going to make sure I have the newest Bina so I can close this one and this one. I'm going to go to this GitHub for Bina. I'm going to download the Linux. Uh -huh. This is the one for Intel and MAD architectures. This one is for another architecture, but I'm not sure which. I don't recognize the name. Let's see if in the instructions we get a little bit more formation. No. Well, we probably are OK with that here. So the compute, I, I'm going to run this in a remote computer, just because uh, that way I can use the eight cores in that other computer and have them free, and have this computer free to just analyze. What abbreviation we can use? ACE, I think. Mm, so I have here I have the new binary for Bina, and I'm not going to copy the ligand yet. And I'll explain why in a second. Ah, okay. So I have one ligand. We need a receptor. I'm going to use this structure to prepare it. And that is one of the things I use by default, because that's the way I like to work, is to get UCSF Chimera open. And I have several tutorials for using Chimera on this, on this channel, if you want to use them. And I'm going to use it to open this structure. You will notice then that I'm not going to use the ligand as it's crystallized. And I'd rather do that in order to test that the redocking work properly. OK, so one of the complications we can immediately see about the ACE is that it has this zinc uh, atom as well as the ligand. Now, that means that we got to be careful when preparing this receptor. So I'm going to take several steps to make sure I'm doing it right first. I'm going to raise the water molecules by selecting them and then deleting them. Mm -hmm. Next, the uh, lysinopril. Mm -hmm. I'm going to erase it. 
delete. Now, this is this is where it gets tricky. Oh, there's another molecule there. Oh, chlorine. There's chlorine. I don't see it, but there's chlorine. I'm going to erase it too. But there's something in there that I haven't noticed before, and it's this. This. A glycine floating around. It's not shown in my uh, selection for residues that are not protein because it's a peptide. So it, I don't know why it's not shown. And gotta be careful because if I run docking while this is here, it may interfere with my docking. So I also gonna, I'm also gonna erase it. And I think this is just the protein and the sink. Okay, for docking, I usually run this tool here called uh, Dock Prep. It's going to run several things, for example, uh, the delete solvent that I did manually, non-complex ions, did, that shouldn't touch this thing, and fix alternate locations as well as uh, mutations from methionine to selenomethionine. But most important here, since I want to keep the sink, is that it's going to add the charges and write a mole file. I, I want that. It's going to take a little bit because it's going to try First, oh yeah, there we go. First, it's going to add the hydrogens. Here we go. Then it's going to try to add the charges, but because this is done through a force field, the residues are going to be done super quick. But the sink is going to be calc. The sink charges are going to be calculated with um, semi-empirical quantum mechanics, and that may take a bit. It's going to be estimated with a charge of minus of plus two i'm gonna leave it like that and then go okay that is actually not correct oh, there's there's an error here I'm, I'm gonna try to check it this glutamine it's weird well, I, th I think that was fast. I I'm going to double check that. That is what I like to do this on UCSF Chimera, because I, even if I closed the structure, or sorry, the log file, I can go back and read it. So it's saying that there's something weird with this glutamine. It, but because of the number, it might be the last one on the structure or this gap here in the structure. No, it's not this one. Six, 18. So there is, maybe I didn't erase that, that residue. This is something that's going to happen with any crystallographic structure. Sometimes they have crystallographically correct information, but chemically incorrect information. And that is going to make our day harder than it needs to. Where is that residue? There, look at that. It's just like the nitrogen. I'm going to erase it, of course. So, the, yeah, so this... Is unusual. I'm gonna try to save the mole file from here and a PDV just to make sure. Mm -hmm. And now a PDV file. Make sure that it's saved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so I think that from here we can go to the remote computer. I'm going to copy those two files uh, just in case. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to erase them locally. The same for these two. And I'm going to close this. Okay, I think we're ready uh, to make sure Bina is working. I'm going to have to go to my remote desktop. Ace, uh -huh. 
CD desktop Ace. And I'm gonna first change that binary to an executable chmod and then move it to opt ad. That is where I usually locate my program files for this type of doc. Then I'm going to use this to, to have the path for ADFR. Okay, there we are fine. As I said, I'm going to use Bina first to dock uh, the Liso Pril. Liso, no, no. <laughs> the Lisinopril and then the ADFR. So for that, that means that we need to prepare. Sorry, I got to check that the files are in the correct place. We have the receptor, but where did I put? Oh, I did not copy the li uh, ligand. Lucky me, I didn't, I, even though I did trash things, I didn't completely erase them. So let's send them. Uh -huh. So as you can see, we have a receptor and a ligand in mall format. We need for sure to change those to a format that Bina or ADFR or Autodoc Crankpeb can read. And that's why I'm going to use the prepare receptor scripts. These come from Autodoc Pep, uh, Crankpeb. I'm going to give it a receptor in mall format. In fact, I'm going to check the help first. No, I think that didn't work. Minus help. Hmm, there is, should be a, hmm, well, what we need to tell it is minus R for the receptor, and that is going to be one zero, one O, sorry, ADP, I'm going to give it the mole file. The reason is that the mole file, in contrast to PDB files, these mole files contain charges. And I need a minus out, which is going to get the same name, but PDVQT. I'm going to verbose output and the minus A, the repairs to make. Actually, that's not the repairs. When, since we already processed the charges and the hydrogens, I, I need the minus U to merge charges and remove nonpolar hydrogens. And lastly, I need this option, minus P, preserve input charges on a specific atom times, which is what I did in the sink. I'm going to make sure that the sync, what's the name of the sync file over here? So I'm going to open it with a remote viewer. I scroll uh, around here between what is the coordinates and the other information, and it's CN, capital C. So like this. Ah, didn't like it. Let's try N. Hmm, that's interesting. It doesn't like what I'm telling. Let, I'm going to remove that command line. It's a cleanup that is not working. Mm -hmm, that's interesting. Okay, I'm going to remove that, just the minus U, and try again. It's still not working. And it's working there with the sync. I'm going to use the PDB, but I don't know. I'm not expecting that to work. Ah. Uh, Uh, 
it, it's there is it, there is where it's failing. So I could do one of two things: try to fix that. Try to fix this or remove the sink. Removing the sink, I think, is going to be the less desirable way to work it. But the faster solution. Now, I think I. Uh, Prepare. Could also, could, also, could also accept this format that is preparing a file with the charges. Wonder if I can try that. No, it doesn't. Hmm. Guess I'm gonna have to do that. Remove the sync from the PDV file. Then we have a caveat that we are running the docking without the sync. And the, the, the problem is that this format, the PDB, has no way to carry charge information. Okay, so here we go. Uh, actually, I'm going to go this one because my file, my PDB has the, all of the hydrogens and we need to merge them. So you can see this worked. We have now a remote receptor. It is what it is. Let's um, run the same for the ligand. I lost the name of the ligand. Ah, the 4.8. Mm -hmm. Lyso Lysinopril. That that's gonna make things so much easier. I'm expecting this to to need the last step. Mm -hmm. Now, what do we need? I'm gonna have to mix a step here. Why? Because in order to find the box for the ligand, and in fact, I, I probably should go back to Chimera here. I need a reference, and it's probably the best to use the reference for the known binding site. And that could be the error on that um, Facebook question. So I'm going to select the ligand, invert the selection, and delete everything that is not a ligand. Don't run it run the doc prep too. <gasps> no, I, I don't need this. I just need the hydrogen. And I'm gonna save this as a reference. Before uploading this, I'm gonna open it on a text editor just to remove anything that is not the coordinates. Mm-hmm. Perfect. I also need to prepare it as a ligand. Perfect. And now I think I can use this remotely with the AGFR GUI to obtain those things, the, the core, the center of the cube where I want to run the dock. And I need to do this also to dock the uh, peptide and your tensine one. So all in all, we have to go through this step. It's quite complicated, I know. That's why I'm recording the video, so you can rewind, go back, forward, make sure you're following all the steps. All right, we need to wait for the program to load. 
Here we go. PDBQT, first the receptor we just prepared. No sync. Now the ligand, the reference in this instance, because we want to know, yeah, that, where is it? So now because we've done that, there is this button where we can make the box focus on the ligand. And this way we could try to reproduce this docking specifically. But since we want to do more than that, uh, what I usually do is get this path, the box, are roughly around eight, which as you can see for a peptide is not that big. So this ligand will probably be easy to fit here, but something bigger will have trouble. I'm going to make the box bigger up to 10 and Okay, since we're gonna do this step again for the angiotensin, I'm not sure we're gonna do that again. I'm gonna keep it tweaked. I think that is more than big enough. Then I'm gonna compute the pockets. Yeah, that's right. We're gonna have to run through this again in but in a different way for the actual docking done in Autodoc Pepcrank. This one, I'm going to go like this for what we already have based on this ligand. I'm going to, since this is this is peptide-like, I could go for this. This for types, as the types in the, pe in the peptide, in the molecule here, restricts the future docking to only, future docking and ADFR to this type of molecule with nitrogen, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. I'm going to select for all types because I don't want the limitation. I don't want to have to run through this preparation again. Now, let's go. I'm going to generate the target file. I'm And I'm going to call this uh, like that. Okay, reminder, we're doing this to get these numbers from the box. We're not going to use these files. Uh, this is done, so I can close it. And now we should have a new file called DRG. We're not going to use it, but I need about DRG, this file, because of these numbers. For Bina, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need a conf file. Uh, let me check if I have one. Hmm, where can I get a configuration file? Maybe that remote computer yeah it doesn't look like I have run Pyrex there well let's let's find should be one around here No. Oh, look at this. We could prepare the sink with this. Well, time that will be done in another example. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should look in the solution. <laughs> yeah, but I don't have... Is this the conf? 
yeah, this is what we need. The basic, at least. But you can give it information such as receptor and give it the name, which in our case is this one. Yes, um, exhaustiveness, which I'm going to leave low. Uh, CPU. And I think that's all we need. I'm going to save it on my desktop. Mm -hmm. I think that's all. Okay, we're ready for Bina. Here, I'm going to make sure I'm using the Bina I, I just uploaded. 0.5. Mm -hmm. There we go. I'm going to... The receptor is in the conf file, so I'm going to tell it the name of the ligand. Remember, everything has to be... Aha, uh -huh, I changed the name for the PDBQ. Aha, uh -huh, PDBQ. We need the receptor, the ligand. The default for the scoring is going to be Vina. For the map center and everything, I'm going to use the config. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's all. The exhaustiveness is inside of the file. The file. Yeah, I'm going to click Enter. Yeah, that worked. Remember, exhaustiveness of 10 is low. I think, in general, this type of work should be done with... What would you say? A hundred? Yeah, actually, it's, it's terrible. Well, it's not that good. You can see that this... Oh, maybe I also need to change this grid space. I'm going to get the, help, the advanced help. Because this binding is terrible. <laughs> it's really terrible. Grid. Where do, where do I change the grid? And I think it's because of the grid. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to type it here. Ah, uh, spacing. Here it is. Oh, I'm glad. It's. I'm going to try to use it on the screen, but if it fails, I, I just... Oh, I need to copy it again. I'll just do it manually in the command line. Yeah, the grid space was changed. So what's the effective effect of that? So the grid space is smaller. The box is also going to be smaller. At one Armstrong, that box should be the right size. Still, the results are less than awesome. I'm going to close this one, and I'm going to modify the configuration file directly on the remote computer. And I'm going to change the exhaustiveness. Honestly, that box looks very, very tiny. But that's what came from the about, right? I didn't make any mistakes. No, I did a mistake, oh, of course. So my mistake, I, I think you could catch it easily, is that I didn't copy the values that are here over there. So I'm going to do that. First down here, these are the easiest. 23, 27.5. So the reason the docking was failing is because my grid was completely wrong in different location, different size. I'm going to round this up. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I could probably round this up to four. And then... Like this. Remember, these are hamstrings, so there's no way this can be uh, as precise as for half an Armstrong or a tenth of an Armstrong or a hundredth of an Armstrong to affect the result. So I'm going to go with that. I reset the exhaustiveness to um, 10. Okay, that looks much better. Much, much, much better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This makes sense. So we should have a new file around here. This one with the results. Here in my desktop, I have, I'm gonna need this PDB, and I could copy this over here to visualize it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to open the PDB on Chimera. Yeah. And I'm going to open the results. I could use Binas um, view doc. Is there such a thing? You can see Autodoc. Yeah, I guess not. I'm going to open it as a regular file. It's not visible, so I'm going to have to tell guess, select the PDV QT, and then select PDV. Uh -huh. And here is the name, so it's going to open it. Now, the trick is here that, uh, as you saw over here, we have nine results. I probably should have restricted it, but here we have nine results. So, although they appear here as one, here we have the ungroup button that separates them. Now, according to sorry, the command line, the best one is the first one, but the first two are quite similar in energy. So I'm going to hide all of them and highlight this one, the first one and the second, which you can see they are very different in, in their positions. Now, we do have a reference, which is the original ligand from the crystallographic structure. Mm -hmm. Let's, I'm going to select that molecule to be able to focus and set a pivot in there. Mm -hmm. There we go. So the molecule in pink is the original from the crystal. This is the first result from docking. We can see that it's far from perfect. The second, the third, the fourth, all of them are in a position that is quite different from the crystal. Why is that? Well, remember in the crystal there is a glycine also occupying some space over here and the zinc molecule should be, I think it was around here. So they are not perfect and we could try to improve it. So what I'm going to do is go back here again, nano, conf, change this. I'm going to go for a hundred. This is going to take longer and we'll see after it's done what's the result. In the meantime, I'm going to check in the doc crank prep what are the steps because I actually don't remember them that well. So yeah, I'm going to need to use the program for generating the box. Okay, so 100 wasn't that bad. 
Let's see what the actual geometry of the result is. Not too different. It's minus 7.4 versus minus 7.4. I'm going to rename those remotely. Here I'm going to add um, C and copy them locally to visualize them. This time I'm going to use the crystal structure just so that we have um, the best visualization possible. Let's focus on the original ligand that's crystallized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here we have the sync position. And this time I'm going to open the newer results with the ones with the letter C. Mm -hmm. And we have more diversity, even some that are farther out there. So we can see that it does not improve the docking. Maybe we, if this was a target with real importance for our work, we probably have to better make sure we can get the sync there to rule that out as a source of these discrepancies. I'm going to ungroup this again, hide, and then go for the first, the vest. The vest is docked. Well, the position of this carboxylic acid is not that far, but the rest is different. But the purpose of the exercise is to get a docking result and then move from there. And that's what I'm going to do. We already have our docking result. We need to continue. So. To continue, we need to extract from this file the best result. And I'm going to create a secondary receptor. Let's call it a double I for two. I'm going to open it as a text here on the left. Make the letters big enough so everybody can read. And then I'm going to open the results on the right. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to put it behind my video frame, but it's here they are. In order to get the ligands out of there, we have the problem of all of this spacing. If we give any PDV using software, these files is not going to understand what's going on. So first, I'm going to extract everything between before this model two flag uh, and this model one. Or I could rather, I'm going to do this. Because I'm going to risk it. Where is the model two? Model two, model two here. Okay. So I'm going to select everything, the other nine results, and erase. Them. And then I'm going to have to transform this. The hard way is by selecting and erasing. Everything that is not an atom flag should go. That's so far so good. And I'm going to erase this last column. I, I probably shouldn't. Well, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to select it and over here, paste it. Okay. I think this is as correct as we can get it. Save it. And again, I'm going to copy this to the remote computer and use it to prepare the new receptor. I'm going to call again 
the command. No, that's not it. The command we used before, adding the two letters I. Aha. And as you can see, it's having trouble with something. My guess, ah, oh, this is, this is it. it. Has some designations that it doesn't understand. Oh, of course, I need to do this is remotely. Just to avoid any problems, I'm gonna remove the top of this and then deal with the bottom. It said something about AA. I don't see anything obvious, so I'm gonna remove this last column. And I'm gonna try again. It seems to work, but the true, the true proof that it works is by opening it in AGFR GUI. I'm gonna make this big, sorry for keeping it small. So hard to see. So I'm going to load the ligand, the reference, but I'm expecting it to overlap with something in there. Mm, sorry, this and this. And because uh, I don't know if you can see it, but down here at the bottom, this ring is from the docked molecule. So it's there in the receptor now, the molecule that we want. I'm going to have to close this because I'm not sure if the, la the presence of the ligand is going to affect the next step. Okay, so for the next step, here we are opening only the receptor that we already checked that has the ligand. We now want to be part of the receptor in there. Uh, I'm gonna change the definition of this software, the autosite for one, the one that uses peptide scoring functions and click on this button. Now this is gonna try Maybe I should use the ligand as a reference because this is going to try to locate the binding site for a peptide within this box. And this we are going to have now to do a different version of this protocol, which is to check what of the which of these pockets makes sense for our binding site. So we need to know a lot about this enzyme. There is no other way around. Okay, here we go. As you can see, there's a large entry point over there. But this is by no means the only one. Uh, now I'm going to load the ligand. I think we're going to need that reference. Yeah, so that will be outside of the binding site we have explored. But this totally a possibility that is the most interesting part the binding side extends could extend all the way to the surface i'm trying to use this as a reference to find other or a, a pocket that will work but none seem to be in the vicinity of the known cavity for the binding site which means yep the oh that one Let's see, I'm going to turn this other off. But I think this one and this one, yeah, the, the, they overlap. OK, so this is probably the best that we can explore. So I'm going to go for that. Um, 
we need, because we're not using the yellow ligand as a reference, only visual reference, we need to click on this box so it's so the box is actually centered on the dots we're looking for. I'm going to have to increase the padding. I think there's no way around it. Eight, which makes now for a very big box. I'm going to make sure all atom types are selected and then I'm going to generate the target file. This target file I'm going to name P for peptide. I, in fact, I'm going to name it PEP just to, so everybody knows exactly what I'm doing here. This is a different target file. We need to create it because the docking site now it's occupied. So we need to try to fit something in a slightly different binding site. This cavity is so much bigger that I'm not expecting it to this process to be done quickly. Well, that was quite fast. And now I need to look for a command line that I think I saved this one. ADCP. Okay, so it, it could work like this with me. I'm going to copy it and explain it to you. So this is a test. This, let's go back to the beginning. Here is where I have to put the sequence of the peptide I want to dock. In our case, we are looking for this one, the angiotensinogen, and this is the sequence for the angiotensin 1. I'm going to paste it over here. And I need to copy that. I, you notice I didn't put it there because the manual recommends that you alternate uppercase and lowercase. Why? What is going on here? Well, it turns out that it's going to generate a structure internally and at random, and the flags for lower and uppercase actually tell the program to try helical and extended configurations. And if you don't know what is the structure of the peptide, they recommend to do this alternating a format so that several conformations get tried and diverse conformation more importantly. I'm going to copy the new target file, uh -huh. the name at least, and the N and the uppercase and the lowercase are the repetitions in the uppercase N and the energy evaluations for the conformation, so 3 million. This is probably recommended by the manual itself, and I guess I can use it as a reference here. Of course, if you have longer peptides, it recommends to use higher volume, higher numbers uh, than the N100, the capital N, or the lowercase 3 million. So if everything is ready, so that is, keep this in mind, we're using as a receptor a, a protein with a ligand bound, and we are going to dock a peptide. That is the logic. The Bina part was done to dock a molecule that is not a peptide, but it looks like a peptide. And with autodock crank pep, we're going to dock a peptide. We don't have a structure for the peptide. Autodock crank pep is going to generate it for us. This one is, I guess I cannot indicate how many cores. So it's, that is one reason to use a different computer so that your current computer doesn't get throttled with the docking. Okay, it detected eight cores, it's going to use eight cores, and it looks like it's going to take a while to perform the calculations. I'm going to um, split my window, so we can use the C can see the CPU use, it's using all of the CPU. Memory use is small, less than, a, less than two gigabytes for the whole thing, but it does look like it's going to take a while. So what I'm going to do is interrupt the video and I'll pick it up when it's done so we can check what happened. But so far, it seems that the approach is working, at least in the technical side. The computer hasn't stopped or throws errors. And what we have left out was the addition of the zinc atom in the binding site. Okay, well, see you in a few. 
after the docking is done. Okay, it's done. I, I made a mistake a little while back and I had to rerun the docking because it doesn't seem to save these files or the actual summary of the results. And here's what I have. Um, we have 21 docking modes. Mm -hmm. Also, only 10 are ranked. So I am guessing that is the first 10. Minus 22 uh, with a very good cluster, a cluster size of 33. And then the third one, not that smaller energy, bigger cluster, or at least in terms of RMSD, and 39, a little bit more populated. So I will go with these two. Uh, I will assume that mode one and three are the ones ranked as one and three. I'm going to copy these two here, and I'm going to open them. Now, given what I just said, I will remind you or emphasize that you should probably copy this text out of the window and put it here. This, this doesn't say how long it took, but I... Yeah, no, sorry, it's, it says about 17 minutes, 20 minutes. That's not a lot, but, but it's not just super fast. Keep, keep that in mind if you're going to run some of these documents. Okay, here we have this one. This is a reference with the uh, original ligand, the Lisi Nopril. And let's open these two here. I don't remember if by doing this, I'm going to be able to open them in the same window. Yes, I did. There we go. So we have those two peptides. They look pretty similar. I'm going to, I'm going to have to select them individually. And please, if you need more help with UCSF Chimera, check some of the other videos in my, my channel. Yeah, here we go. It's kind of difficult to see what's going on, but of course you can see that there is no overlap. That that is, the binding site of the lysonopril is separated from the binding site of the peptide. But we we cause that when we prepare the receptor uh, under um, AGFR GUI. That is, we built a box of the cavities that were available, and the first binding site, of course, is a cavity that is not available. So this is the, fir there is the first result. So you can see that there's some weird things going on. And this is because the peptide was saved in a format that organizes the atoms differently. And I'll, I'll go into that in a sec. But I just want to see. Yeah, they're, they are similar. It kind of makes sense. It's putting an opposite charge or a, or a neutral in front of a positive charge. My guess is that... Yeah, it doesn't show protons, but it may be charged. Just gonna quick. Mm, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna fix the way the binding, sorry, the the peptides look. Um, since these are copies, I'm gonna edit them directly. And the reason they look unusual on the on the Chimera visualizer is because, as you can see here, um, the Peptide, it has the residues divided into the backbone and the side chain. They are first the backbone and then the side chains instead of being mixed as in a normal PDB. So what that causes is that the, the bonds are displayed in the wrong positions. So I'm going to try to fix that. I guess probably if you are going to do this a long time or for a lot of peptides, probably putting together a script that does that automatically is, is something that you should put in your to-do list. Because handling a lot of peptides this way is going to be tedious. And uh, when something is tedious, it's going to become error-prone. And that's the only thing you don't want in your docking. You may get wrong results, you may get weird results, but you don't want errors. That was number five, wasn't it? And number six, number seven, number nine. I noticed that I'm doing this just for the first 
peptide, the first, um, sorry, the, the highest ranking result. I'm not going to do it for the third or any of the others for that matter. Here. Now we can open this one and the one I just edit. Mm -hmm. And now you can see it looks much better. I'm going to just run through the presets of Chimera to make it look... No, that's not what I wanted. No. Yeah, no, not what I wanted to. Oh. Mm -hmm. That probably looks, looks much better. So as you can see, um, it's much clearer what's going on. Lysinopril is at the deepest part of the binding site, in the catalytic side and it's blocking the peptide from getting in. As I said before, this testing will probably be, have to be done both ways, docking the peptide first and then the ligand, and using these energies, not only this one, but also the ones for the original lysinopril docking, which hmm, it's probably within this file, and of course establishing some baselines, some controls here. This is the Vina result for that. Establish a hypothesis and how this should work in the context of that hypothesis. That being said, this is just an exercise uh, of how this can be done, how it can be achieved, and how you could repeat it yourself and establish your own framework for working with the simulations. So I hope you enjoy it. Please like, subscribe, uh, Donate if you find this useful, I guess. I should set up a Patreon to handle those requests, like a specific solution videos, but I haven't done it yet. So if you subscribe, pass this information on, I will appreciate it. Growing my, my viewership will be useful. So thank you. Have a good one. Bye-bye.